The authorities are sent by God to help you. But if you are doing something wrong, of course you should be afraid, for you will be punished. The authorities are established by God for that very purpose, to punish those who do wrong. So you must obey the government for two reasons. One, to keep from being punished, and then to keep a clear conscience. Pay your taxes, too, for the same reason, for government workers need to be paid so they can keep on doing the work God intended them to do. We will stop there. So, Father, thank you so much for the word, God, God as we will dissect and help us to understand more of the word. Be so, be, be so, exalted in our midst. Be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, Yesterday in my teaching about the holiness, and I will go now to the responsibility, responsible life to the governing authorities, I touch about the God of the heavens, Adonai, in the book of Exodus, which is, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, careful in praises, doing wonders? Now, the revelation of God is now in our hands, the Bible, and the God of the heavens and earth, as I touched yesterday, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you can cry, Abba, Father, the Trinity now is residing inside of you. It was a wonderful uh, thing to know. It was an honor. Who is like you compared to the gods of nations, millions and millions of gods, so, you know, in many countries of the world, by the billions of them in India and in, in, in different countries of the world. No one or nobody can compete to our God, who is a God of absolute perfection, the sovereign and majestic God, and all-powerful. Now, this is the God that you and I are serving. Now, as we go to our lesson this afternoon, our duty us serving the God who is majestic, who is sovereign, who is absolute and perfection, serving God in the way we submit to the earthly authorities. That is serving God as well. Now, the number one says, obey the government. Now, obey the government, for God is the one who put it there. Now, the word that is used there is, Everyone, from the unbelievers to the believers in the Lord, everyone, not you want to, or maybe if I have time, maybe I can do some other things, but the Bible is very plain. It is a, a command. Everyone must submit to governing authorities. They must submit. No matter what the system of government or political ideology of that government, the word of God is clear and plain. Submit. Submit. And some question might be for those who want to spiritualize this uh, serving God. Isn't it God is only concerned about his spiritual kingdom? No. Everything. Now in the book of Psalms 47, 8, as we can see as we go down to this uh, other verses, the Bible says, God reigns over the nations. Right there. He governs over the nations. God seated in his holy throne. He is there sitting in the holy throne, governing the four corners of the earth, potentates, magistrates, governors, and kings, and, and presidents, and prime ministers all over the world. The whole leaders all over the world is governed in God rules, in the affairs of men. Now, in the book of the Old Testament, there was a man by the name of King Nebuchadnezzar. In chapter 3, in chapter 4, I just want to bring you to the, the account of this man in the book of Daniel. I will just read to you, and it is uh, uh, self-explanatory, but it's good to read the Word of God in the book of Daniel. Uh, chapter 4, follow me, and you can see this man who is so blessed Blessed to the pinnacle of success, there was a big lesson for him to understand that he was not 
the first kingdom or the very kingdom of Babylon, there must be somebody, and he came to the conclusion that he was a subordinate. Now, so I want you to, to hear as I read to you in the book of the Old Testament, Daniel, chapter 4. Follow me. Because God governs the whole nation of the world. Now, there we are. Now, in the vision, I saw while lying in my bed, I looked, and there before me was a messenger, a holy one, coming down from heaven. He called in a loud voice, cut down the tree, and trimmed its branches, strip of the leaves, and scatter its fruit. Let the animals flee from under it, and the birds from its branches. But let the stump and its roots, bound with iron and bronze, remain in the ground and in the grass of the field. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven, and let him live with the animals among the plants of the earth. Let his mind be changed from that of man, and let him be given the mind of an animal, till seven times pass by for him. That was the judgment of God. The decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict, so that the living may know that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes and sets over them to the lowest of men. And so you can see here that was the message of the Lord to King Nebuchadnezzar. And it was very, very clear. And Daniel, the man of God, through a vision or dream, interpreting the message to King Nebuchadnezzar, King, here is the interpretation. You will be driven away from the people, and you will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like cattle, and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge until you come to your senses, until you become sane because you are full of pride, in other words, that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes. The command to leave the stem of the tree with its roots means that your kingdom will be restored to you, a wonderful God of second chance. I love this God here. It will be restored to you when you acknowledge the heaven rules. Therefore, O King, be pleased to accept my advice. Resu uh, renounce your sins by doing what is right, and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that then your prosperity will continue. Something happened uh, here, you can see, that this man forget after a few months and he become proud. And sure enough, the verdict has come to him. And I want you to know that the moment he was driven, he come to the senses, his, uh, the dream is fulfilled, he come to say, now here is Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the, the nails become like claws of eagles, the hair become like feathers of an animal. Can you just imagine living with animal for seven years? Oh, here he was eating what the animals were eating. The very powerful king, the first kingdom in Babylon, he was living with animal. If you don't have cutting your nails for seven years, what would happen to your nails? It will become what? Crooked or whatever. And then here is now the confession. He was humbled by God. And then here is the confession of this man. May I read to you. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified Him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. Look at this king. People of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the, with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand and to say to him what you have done. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of Heaven because everything He does is right and all His ways are just. And those who walk in pride, He is able to humble. Now, this is a wonderful 
story about how the Lord ruled the kingdom of men. Now, we can say in this context of the power of God that overruled the affairs of men is that God is saying to us, submit to all the authorities that is presented to you, the, the government authorities. Now, in analyzing, I want you to understand also, on the other side of the pendulum, so I will not go to one side, when the government will force you into God's realm of morality and religion, they will force you, believers must obey God rather than men. That's another story. Now, there was an incident when Peter and all the apostles after the wonderful miracle in the book of Acts in chapter 4, priests and all the Sadducees and Pharisees, they were having some kind of board meetings. How can we stop these people? Put them to jail. And they have what they call a private meeting in chapter 4. In chapter 5, they were placed inside the jail. But something happened, an angel of the Lord delivered them and the same group of people never stopped going to the front of the temple and inside of the temple and they share the good news of Jesus Christ. And so these people said, I forewarn you, can we cannot be giving you some hard time if you do this and will give you the freedom of everyone to do. And David said, we rather obey God than men. When it comes to God and they are, you are being deprived to, to follow what God has prescribed for us to follow in that context we must obey God than the governments of men that's the extreme part of that okay so you can see so analyzing chapter 5 uh, chapter 5 verse 29 in Daniel the two verses 7 government is ordained or placed by God before us and therefore Resistance to government leaders in the exercise of their lawful authority is rebellion in disobedience to God. So if I disobey them and I don't submit to them, God, I'm sorry to let you know, you might be preaching the word of God if you violate the law that I have placed before you you'll be in trouble to me because I have given them the power and the position to function and that is to punish the evildoer so they got the people will be able to enjoy the peace of doing what is right and what is good. So you can see, God placed these people in the government for a reason. Now God has given us some wonderful group of people who are placed over you. Now, in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 18, we can see, Wives, is in the family, submit to your husbands as it fitting into the Lord. Ephesians, uh, another book said, submit unto your husband as unto the Lord. Peter, it's the same thing in the book of Peter, 5.22. Now, I want you to talk, even to the unbelieving husbands in the context of Peter, so many uh, scripture here, God just declared that husband, your role is to submit to your husband, especially when the, un uh, the, the husband is unbeliever. And I'll explain to you in a few moments. So in Ephesians chapter 5, this God has placed us. So we have government leaders, we have leader at home, and I... The husband is placed to be the leader and to administer primarily, number one, in the spiritual aspect of the family, number two, in the protection of the family, and then supply the need of the family. So here, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, Christ is the head and the governor of the church, Ephesians 5, 22. And he is the head of the man. You can see the, the chain of command. Jesus Christ is the head, and then in his the head of the church, and he is the head of a man. Church, man. Okay, you can see that. So the word of God is implying that man is the head or the governor of the woman. Now this is God's ordinance, and 
not be violated or disobeyed. Now, so if it is violated, the corresponding kind of discipline is not from men, but from God. And the Bible is very clear. You cannot kick against the bricks. The word of God is to aged sword the moment you resist.